introduce our paper and supervise the representation learning of player behavior data with confidence guided masking. My name is Joshua I'm from the Fuxia Lab Netis Incorporation. So uh, I'm an AI researcher from the Natural Language Processing Group and I'm doing uh, research in the intersection of natural language processing and uh, gaming. So I'm going to introduce the background first. The game industry is very prosperous and artificial intelligence is widely used in the game field. For example, bot detection, player chain protection, chip purchase, timing protection, and personalized recommendation. But uh, the deploy deployment of uh, AI application needs to grow, go through five steps. Um, uh, including data cleansing, feature engineering, training, sample labeling, model development, and deployment. There are many problems in the process. For example, the need for strong domain knowledge, high cost of data processing and labeling, and high degree of uh, customization while low degree of reusing. The traditional procedure of developing intelligence services uh, include, include data cleansing, um, feature engineering, training, sample labeling, model de development and deployment. And these steps has to repeat uh, each uh, case by case for each task, such as for for uh, body detection, you have a, sp a specific uh, feature for this task, but for another task like uh, a player chain prediction, you have to uh, develop another model and start over again. So it's very labor intensive and uh, will waste, uh, waste a lot of time. Um, and it's very painful to do that. That's why we need to find a way, you know, like to to train a uh, model once, and uh, then we can deploy the same model to different tasks and re reduce the cost of uh, labeling and uh, human intervention as much as possible. Um, that's why we resort to the uh, method of unsupervised pre-training. Uh, pre so unsupervised pre training is very success successful in the natural language processing and in other domains because there are lots of um, self-supervised data such as the uh, language we use, uh, the test we write and uh, in the game such as MMORPG uh, the situation is quite similar because you know uh, people interact in these um, um, virtual environments will generate a lot of uh, behavioral data uh, you know players uh, you know, interacting with other players or accomplishing uh, a huge task involves so many steps, and these these steps can be recorded or be logged by the game developer, and uh, thus rendering many many of these behavior logs. Um, in general, these logs are just uh, just be there and. Uh, we won't use them particularly for a, a specific task, so it's really a waste of uh, these uh, log data. So the motivation is to uh, extract knowledge from these unlabeled data to help the game developers to quickly uh, iterate their uh, different uh, intelligence services. So next we're going to introduce uh, our data sets. So player behavioral in game is a very common data type. No matter what type type of data, the player's operation during the game will be recorded in such form of logs. Uh, so it's often logged uh, in chron chronological order, where each event indicates a specific player player action in our system recorded at the moment. Each event consists of three parts: time step, event ID, object ID, and a player event can be proactive, passive, or part of a uh, system log. So proactive uh, logs uh, such as uh, entering maps or use spell use item really indicates what uh, the player is thinking at the moment. So it reflects the player's uh, uh, free of will. And pro predicting the proactive events is uh, generally to be considered much harder for the uh, predicting the pro uh, passive logs or system logs because you know players under different contexts may decide to do completely different things because humans are different right uh, on the other hand the other two different two uh, uh, logging f uh, two different logs uh, 
such as the, the uh, passive logs record player's state pure, pure, periodically generating passive behavior logs, which is considered also as the player portrait state information. Uh, the recording of system logs operate in a heartbeat manner, including player state queries or current map queries, etc. So these are these two types of uh, logs are relatively easy to predict. Uh, so before diving into the detail of method, I think it's rather important to elaborate the key differences between test and peer sequences and how we developed our ideas from these discrepancies. You know, uh, so the uh, super chain is very successful in the NLP domain. It's not wise uh, to just uh, directly transplant this technology to the game domain, and uh, we will it, we will uh, ask uh, we will answer why. Uh, due to the na narrow bandwidth through which people communicate, natural language conveys a high density of information, often condensed. On the other hand, the behavioral sequences are more concerned with the integrity of records, uh, in ensuring that essential information can be traced readily traced after later. Uh, for various services, uh, so there's key, two key differences between the first test language is often appropriate, it's not too long, and it has uh, explicit semantic segmentation like uh, the paragraph, sentence, or uh, and punctuations, and. Uh, mm, but for the uh, game, the hero games, there are no ex explicit segmentation, and uh, it's it's usually very long, more than three thousand tokens on average. Second, second difference is uh, that uh, natural language often con contains high density of information, and uh, while raw behavior sequences contain redundant information, uh, such as uh, system logs, uh, or irrelevant information might prevent the model from learning different player styles or player personalities, leading to convergent or meaningless behavioral representations. So, we hope the model to spend more effort on learning tokens that reflect, reflect players' autonomous thinking and initiative, and directly applying the vanilla masking length modeling may lead to bias sampling. As can be the seen from the left figures, the most frequently masked tokens are automatic system logs, uh, under using the uh, vanilla MLM, and passive logs. And tokens ranked second, fourth, fifth, and sixth are similar passive logging actions, which says friend needs over hundred. We believe sampling too many of those system uh, or passive logs is of little help in modeling personalities for different players. On the other hand, from the right figure. Uh, we can see an increasing trend of proactive actions as token confidence goes down, which is consistent with the general perception that player subject will is very is much more difficult to be inferred. Overall, we think that under vanilla MLM, task irrelevant logs are oversampled and task relevant proactive actions are not fully exploited. Here, the task means the downstream task, so we unsupervised pre train a. Uh, uh, a sequence encoder and later it will be fine-tuned on various uh, downstream tasks. So we propose our solution to both problems. For the excessive length and the absence of semantic segmentation, we propose to use the byte pair encoding to iteratively merge co-occurring adjacent behavioral tokens as appropriate system step before pre-training. We show that the process of BP merging uh, on the left figure and show the input of top of the encoder on the right figure. So it's quite clear the sequence length is much shorter after compression. And this, uh, this picture we show in concrete example on, on how the raw rocks can be merged into meaningful semantic segments via the BP encoding process. Okay. Uh, Uh, in this figure, we can see that the, the, the plot of zip for law of beeping compressed sequence is much more similar with the plot of the test than of the law sequence. The narrow gap may also, also contribute to the better performance of the model. Next, we are going to introduce our main method, confidence-guided masking modeling. 
the most commonly uh, used training task for is MLM. MLM aims to learn high-level coagulating patterns. We choose MLM and trans transplant it uh, to the game domain because the constant context sensitivity property is also prevalent in the behavioral sequences. Uh, but we also mentioned that there are several drawbacks of adopting the MLM directly. Uh, it uh, pay too much attention to the irrelevant logs. Uh, so we, we improve on this uh, training per training task and we uh, introduce our th this uh, uh, P MTC method. Uh, so we, we have a, a tracking vector that tracks the token confidence values and uh, during training to to record the the model predicted token confidence value. The gist of this method is to increase the probability of uh, low, the tokens of low confidence values and uh, to uh, decrease uh, the masking po probability of those that uh, uh, of high high confidence values. So if model is very confident, uh, very familiar with some tokens, we just lower the probability of such tokens being sampled. And there involves a very uh, tricky hyperparameter temperature. And uh, during experiment, we find it's uh, better to set the temperature to the average of token confidence in the training batch. And there's also some problems of the MTC method that uh, we uh, mean cause some oscillations of training loss uh, at the beginning of the training because uh, the confidence may be not accurate in the beginning of the training. So that's the reason we introduced another uh, improved uh, method called partially masking by total confidence. Um, so, so it's quite simple, you know, uh, we just gradually increase the probability of training by MTC. At the beginning, the, most of the time, we will still train by the vanilla MLM, and uh, uh, during the course of training, we will gradually increase the probability of training by MTC. So, uh, with this method, we, we find that the, the training at the beginning uh, is much more stable, and uh, at the end, the PMTC is the best method. Uh, so, how do we evaluate our method? So, we introduce four downstream tasks in two games from just an online ghost story. These are NetEase games and MMORPG. So, including uh, four downstream tasks, including bot detection, chain prediction, project time prediction, and using similar players. So, these are the results from the feature extraction and fine tuning. Um, so we're going to uh, summarize the results from three aspects. Uh, first, it's tokenization. The BPE tokenization outperformed uh, the white space counterpart in all experiments because uh, the DP compressed sequence is much more shorter and has semantic uh, uh, semantic segmentations, and uh, it makes the the task of uh, predicting the mask token much more difficult. And thus, we have a much more better uh, representation. Uh, for the model, we find that uh, the bird model with BP dominant outperform two efficient transformers on all tasks. Um, this is also because that uh, like the reformer reformer uh, trained on the raw logs is too easy because uh, the, we find the perplexity of such two models is very very low compared to BERT. And for the masking strategy we find that the PMTC is the best overall best one, especially for the uh, fine tuning experiment. Okay, the last we, we deploy our latest PMTC training techni technique in the bot detection task of a world class MLRPG. Uh, in the left figure shows the whole workflow and the PMTC served as a future extractor and uh, the right figure shows uh, after switching to the to the PMTC encoder the suspicious, play, suspicious player uh, detected every day is uh, continuously to rise to prove the effectiveness of our method. So at last I want to stress the merits of method. So, uh, uh, our approach fully exploits the task relevant knowledge from the raw behavior data and it does not require any expert knowledge at all and the low requirements for the training data. We do not require any data cleansing or any other types of um, pre-processing step. And the training once can meet the, the needs of multiple scenarios simultaneously. And last but not least, our approach can markedly reduce the cost of labeling. All right, that's all for our presentation and uh, uh, also uh, 
uh, present the link to the to the code. So we have open sourced the, the code for our methods. And uh, if you have any questions, you can follow me on Twitter or send a message to me. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, really great work. Um, I, I believe that we are kind of like over time, but if there is a burning kind of question, um, if, an, if anyone has a question, uh, Joshua, I think, is here for the questions. So there is a question in the chat um, from, I mean, uh, that's a super cool study. What's uh, an acceptable rate for false positives for you? All right. Hello, everyone. Can 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 anyone hear me? Yep. Yep. Um. So I think it depends on the game. Um. So I, I, I just really can't give, give you a, a number for you, what is acceptable rate. It all de depends on the, the difficulty of the task and the, the, the specific game that, um, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. in MMOs, you always hear about a big ban wave and then some people are like, oh, I got banned and they're not a bot, right? And I was just wondering, how you get, I think Lost Ark recently highlights this. There was just bots is a huge problem there. And I was just wondering what's an acceptable rate of false positives for you guys that you would work with the game team to just restore accounts at that point? Hmm. Or how do honest, you look I... at false positives, right? Like, is it okay to have some for you or do you, do you aim for over correcting on that error side versus like the uh, you know having more mm, to be honest I, i'm um more like uh, working on the algorithm side and the the other colleague he is not here today unfortunately but uh, you know um he may give more insight on how to you know like the trade-off um, to choose between the the acceptor rate uh, because uh, he, uh, he he did more work on the deploy deployment in the game. Okay, so thank I, you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Very cool stuff. Yes, thank, thank you. you for the presentation.